forgot to record it. Ah, all right. So Kala just presented a great presentation about, again, I don't dare pronounce it, but a great woman activist and promoter of women's rights in Yemen. And she explained how uh, Yemeni women are way at the bottom of any scale, right? The country was poor and now it's in a war. And yet this woman managed to speak up for women's rights. She won a Nobel prize. She's now in the public eye. So she's really inspiring people. And then um, Kaula just talked about how um, in order for women to really develop, you have to look at every sector and the business sector, and then the educational sector, political sector. Um, it's complicated, but you have to keep working at it because if you don't work at it, it will get worse, right? All the old stuff will just fall, people will fall back into their old patterns or they'll give up. So no matter how difficult it seems, you do have to keep trying. The only thing worse is for anybody to quit. Okay, now go ahead. We'll, we'll take at least three questions. Um, I'm really interested to hear them. Yeah, please. Come on, sisters, you have to inspire each other. Oh, no comments? Oh my God. Well, is anybody, Marzia? Go ahead, Marzia. Um, uh, uh, first of all, I have to say that thank you, Paula, uh, for giving us information about women in Yemen, and it was really inspiring. Uh, and uh, I, I have a question that, uh, what was, uh, like, this was the name of that woman, right? I, so, so, I cannot so good yeah, uh, what, uh, what, what was the reason that Tawakul Karam come from a background like from a society like Yemen and uh, fight for women and uh, and uh, won the Nobel Prize? So what was like how? Uh, what was the reason, the story behind uh, her, her life like? Like there are many women in Yemen. So how uh, a, very, a very small person of women come from a society like Yemen, which is war, uh, like the situation is not good for women. So how, what, what uh, inspired that woman and that woman? And what was her personal story? I mean that uh, for a woman, it's not easy to be an inspirational source for other women. So how she could manage it and how she could get uh, uh, up to this step. Good, good question. Yeah. Can I explain now or for the yeah. next one? No, it's great. Uh, okay, I think the main reason for the Wakul Karman to inspire the other ones, it's her family. You know, there's open-minded family who inspire their daughters to go on in life. So, this is the first reason. And she have in cars. Yeah, we're not gonna finish all the presentations today. So that's why I'm giving you time, right? Um, okay, so she had a family that inspired her. Okay, that's great. A lot of you have that. Um, go ahead, Sauda. Thank you, Khaula. Most welcome. Uh, hello, Professor. Uh, hello, Farla. Uh, your research paper make us uh, more inspiring. Uh, I want to ask a question like uh, the Tawakul Karam, uh, which woman do you say about? Uh, did she did she added? Uh, uh, with any organization? Excuse me, could you repeat it again? 
didn't Wait. she uh, I added with any organization uh, i mean didn't you work with any organization yes did she start an organization are you saying soda yeah uh, professor i mean uh, didn't she any uh, work with any organization yes and also right now she has the her own organization Professor, don't we have to add uh, this point in our paper? Well, I, I just said a woman or an organization, right? It doesn't have to be both. It. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, thank you. Sure. Um, thank you so the, much. What's the name of her organization, Kaula? Uh, it is Tokul Karman Organization. Oh, okay. It's named after her. Okay. Um, yes. Where's Rafa? She, she was here. Is she gone? Uh, she has internet issues. Yeah, okay. Um, She's not in WhatsApp. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Paula, for this interesting presentation. And like, uh, it was so inspiring for all of us. Like, uh, I have a question that, uh, like, did she found any organizations like for who, uh, like, uh, women's right and who is she working for women's, uh, like, um, uh, yes. Did, did she found any organization who is she's, like working for women's right or? Uh, yes, there. At one? first. She was working with uh, the United States organization, which are in Yemen. But next, she made her own organization for supporting women. What is uh, this name? Like her own organization. It's named Tawakul Karman Organization. It's named after her. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. Does anybody Thank else you. want to volunteer to be second? Um, um, I can be second, but uh, 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 I have uh, written the paper. I have to do some changes that I will do after class and submit. That's fine. Go ahead. What's your thesis? What did you write about? Uh, uh, Ma'am, can I share my screen? Sure. Actually, let me... Uh, let me change this. Okay, there you go. So Kala was having electricity issues. So then if you hand it in on Google Classroom, then I can do it. But if you can do it yourself, that's great. Can you do it, Mahira? Oh, Ma'am, I did not uh, hand it in, but uh, I was, I kept it in here, but I cannot find it now. I don't know why. I need to. Oh, and you know, it's fine with me if you just give the argument, you just give the background, you know, you just summarize stuff. That's great. Okay, then I'm, I'm, I'm telling... Um, Professor, if it's not fine, I can go. Uh, Ma'am, I'm uh, telling. Okay, I'm ready, but I, I don't know why I can't share my screen. Okay. Uh, would you like someone else to go first and see if you... Yes, Professor, I want to go first. Is that okay, Mahira? And then we'll get back to you. It's it's okay, but I don't think I will be able to share my screen. I will tell uh, in words. Okay. Do you uh, want to wait till the next day, or do you want to just go ahead? Yeah, you can say it in words. That's fine. Um, if someone if someone wants to go before me, she's most welcome. Okay, so go ahead. Okay, professor, I want to share my screen first. Then go ahead. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Dolana Khatun and uh, I'm, I'm gonna present my research paper, which is about uh, uh, the impacts of drug on women's education and empowerment in Bangladesh. Like it's a famous organization in Bangladesh and it's also like, um, uh, 
uh, it's also a like uh, well known organization for social work uh, so i i uh, i am interested uh, to writing about it so first i <clears throat> want to uh, say about the background uh, of my of the study like uh, uh, bangladesh is a developing country and uh, uh, and uh, uh, it has been working uh, like uh, for uh, pro uh, uh, progressing the women's education and uh, their empowerment and uh, there is a lots of organizations uh, like these are government and non government also uh, like these are working uh, for uh, women's education and their rights uh, so i choose one organization like which is uh, like brac and uh, it's it has a great uh, like uh, <clears throat> a great contribution uh, for uh, like um, uh, uh, increasing women's education and their empowerment and uh, it's also work for the like uh, poverty uh, remove the pro poverty from our uh, like uh, society and uh, it's also work uh, for uh, uh, okay so education you have to and their, uh, employment right. and uh, uh, lots of things. Okay, so, so you, do, you do have to go a little faster, right? Uh, so, do yes, last. Uh, okay. The beginning. So, okay. So, uh, professor, yeah. sorry to interrupt. So, I think that uh, so while presenting the paper, we can, uh, I mean, each and every of us can talk about our oh, thesis okay. statement uh, the main and support obviously because we'll draw out of time if we go to so, explain everything. I know. So Dolana, you just say the background is that Bangladesh has been helping women for a long time and Brock is particularly uh, important, has a great reputation. That's it. Okay. okay. Now, your main... Uh, my main claim is uh, like uh, how... Uh, like uh, BRAC working uh, for women's uh, like uh, educations uh, to uh, like make a uh, better educational environment and supporting women to get uh, economically independent and like improving women's leadership and skills. Like uh, okay, so this is my thesis statement, and uh, next I will gonna like. Um, <clears throat> Uh, present uh, three uh, like statements to like support my claim and uh, so the first uh, the first claim of my uh, like paper is how so the claim of my paper is how Okay, so the working for make a better educational in like environment for women and like it's a give the um, support for women's uh, <laughs> Delana, professor like is it okay or not it's Delana. why don't you uh okay. yes professor can you hear me well there's way too much noise there's is somebody else's microphone on or what uh, yes it was <laughs> Wait, does somebody else have a microphone on besides Delana? Yes, I think Rahima, her, her microphone is on. Okay. Uh, okay, Delana, try to say it really quickly and scroll through that. What did your research, what kind of research, qualitative, quantitative? <laughs> Uh, 
it's a quality research and uh, in the research is based on the secondary uh, like uh, uh, secondary uh, research resources and uh, like uh, i uh, have collect some information from the like google or uh, google scholars and uh, some uh, like uh, research papers and uh, <laughs> okay. Um, why don't you just say, Delana, why don't you say your conclusion? Um, Professor, why don't you mute Rahima? <laughs> yes, yes so sorry, but yeah, you can do that, Professor. Is, I can't figure out who is not. Rahima, Rahima after Eva. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can't. You can do that, Professor. You can. Let's see. Stop participant sharing. That's what I have to do. So who else's mic is on? Rahima, please mute. Okay. I don't think I mute it. Anyway. Okay. Dolana, why don't you just say what your conclusion is? Sorry. Thank you. My conclusion is that we should work like like the BRAC, we should uh, work for uh, like uh, our in uh, women to uh, make this progress uh, and uh, we, sh we have to work a lot for uh, like uh, uh, like uh, to make the gender equality in our society and we also we have to also encourage our women uh, or our girls to get educated and uh, to get uh, like uh, uh, economically uh, dependent uh, self dependent and also like uh, okay um, okay so the thing about brock is that you could say it sets a paradigm. It's a model that a lot of other organizations have imitated. And you could say, you know, this is particularly useful, this and this. Uh, but anyway, that's okay. We got to move on. I'm sorry about that. And I'm sorry about, yeah, I mean, Dolana, I'm so sorry you got interrupted. I, and I didn't catch it right away. Um, who was going to go third? Pooja. Pooja was going to go. And then, anyway, Pooja next. Professor, I sent you a file yesterday. Can you please show that? Well, ma'am. Thank you. Pooja, can you put your slides on or should I try to go to my uh, desk? Yeah. Can you get your slides on, Pooja? A professor, I'm using phone because my laptop is not working. Okay, let me see if I can go to my desktop. Um, uh, you can directly go to my email and then just, uh, you know, the slides. You don't have to present it. I, I'll manage it. Okay, okay, just a sec. <laughs> I am sorry, you, you guys. I'm not real adept at this either. Um, Okay, Pooja, and then um, the thing always goes, you know, it keeps pushing things down. And then there you are. Okay. Um, uh, can, okay, do I download here and then do it? No, you, you don't have a download, Professor. You can directly open it, I guess. Is this okay? Is this going to work for you? Um, uh, it will work, I guess. Can you can you punch the buttons too? <laughs> you can directly punch the button. I don't. I, I don't think you didn't. You need to download it. Okay. How about you just? Can you? Do you have access to the button? Otherwise, you can just tell me to press the button. You can press uh, so the button and just uh, move on and I can. Okay, go ahead, Pooja. Just start and that's great. Should I go to the second one? No, did you 
I can't see the slides. Sorry. Professor, you haven't opened it yet. Okay. Um, I can so see. So just double click on it. Oh, like that? Yes, Professor. You can double click on the presentation. Okay. Um, so I did, but that didn't work. Um, all right, so, um, well, that's, okay, let me try here. Professor. All right, so I just double click on this. Can you see it? Yeah, yes. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yes, Professor. Uh, a very good morning to everyone. My name is Puja and I'll be talking about an organization uh, on a brief example, taking all over organization in Nepal. So second slide, please. Can you move down? Okay. Um, yeah, there we go. This one or the next uh, one? A little. Uh, yeah, uh, the third one, I guess. Little Sister Fund is an organization in Nepal which contributes for women education and well-being of this society. Usa Achare is the co-founder and educate director of Little Sister Foundation, E4E, with, where she mentions that today I am uh, where I am and doing what I am doing, thanks to my education. And Little Sister Foundation had been contributing 2,113 students till now for their education and empowerment and better uh, well-being of the society. Fourth slide, please. Okay. So the background of this story. So uh, this uh, study was uh, based on, uh, my study for this paper is based on taking an example of the Sister Foundation and, uh, and claiming that uh, like, uh, like NGOs working for betterment of uh, women's and contributing in education, I claim that Little Sister Foundation in Nepal has been able to succeed in fostering the rate of female education, which is helping them in being empowered and empower, in, independent. Fifth slide, please. So for claiming my statement, I have used three papers, which has been uh, published uh, in the Google Scholars PubMed and uh, published data. So the first uh, paper is about role of women's empowerment in poverty reductions by Sapkota and Rabin 2010. So this paper includes the women's status in Nepal, especially in Bhojpur, where women are less than 25% uh, of women are receiving uh, even primary level of education and could not, sub, uh, you know, could not, uh, you know, finished it due to their uh, you know, lack of support in their society. Second paper is based on the role of NGOs in, in improving and enhancing the quality of education in Nepal by Hikmat and their group by in 2015, which presents that how uh, NGOs like Little Sister Fund is uh, helping in contribution of education and helping nations as well by providing educations or you know like uh, trainings to the people. It includes the uh, women, women from you know raped, trafficked, or you know even harassed uh, women. So the third and final uh, papers that I have included in NGOs in relations to women rights and social movements in Kathmandu, Nepal. So this is a published data from XNA 2016. So which explains about the women's women fighting for their women rights and the social movements that has been started since 2016. Uh, so another slide, please. Uh, little up. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So uh, 2019 data shows that uh, this is the data for uh, for all over Nepal. So uh, before, uh, as my first article uh, presents about less than 25 uh, females who have not even able to get contribute 
you know, able to get their education. But now, according to the 2019 data, it shows that it, females are receiving education and the league number is 65 percentage and more than 38 percentage of females are involved in their employment and 27 percentage of women are establishing their own business or organizations uh, at the current stage. Next slide, please. So Little Sister Fund as an example of progress. So when Little Sister uh, have st started in 2000, uh, nine, 1998, it was the least number of student, but in 2010, it was found that 25% of students were only the one who were receiving the educations from LSF, but now, over 90 percent of people of girls have successful to make progress by receiving educations from LSF, according to data 2019. Another slide, please. Yeah, so what 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 I what I want to have, like you know conclude is that you know uh, taking an example of an organizations in Nepal what I have claimed about supporting educations in by the organizations, they are actually improving, supporting and empowering women by providing training, education and awaiting them about rights. Few years, few years ago, NGOs were not much highlighted about uh, NGOs, but and only a uh, few of them were getting benefited from them. But now the status of women has been improved a lot. Over 65% of people uh, are receiving education, which is a good thing. And I think uh, that's all about my paper. Thank you for listening. No more slides. Thank you. Okay. All right. So if anybody wants to do slides next time, that would be good. Um, does anybody have a question? We'll take three questions. Nobody wants to raise their hand. Uh, professor, I want to go. So uh, I have one question for Kuzadi. So uh, you talked about Little Sisters Fund, right? So is it a national organization or an international organization working for the uh, women's education in Nepal? So, thank you for the question, uh, Kasturi. So this organization is a national organization. However, the funds were collected from the international base. Trevor is one of the founder of uh, this uh, organization and he is from, uh, I mean, like US, I guess. And uh, he collects all the funds from there and help this organization in Nepal. So it is a national organization that gets supported from international funds. Thank you. Somebody Thank else? you for the clarification. <laughs> Um, okay, I want to ask a couple things, Pooja. Um, first of all, when you had those articles, you had the middle one was education and the other one was concerning rights and you did refer to rape. And the first one, you were focused on poverty. So I wanted to ask, um, are there certain organizations, is hers specifically focused on education? Are other ones specifically focused on poverty? Other ones specifically focus on legal issues with violence. Others specifically focus on business opportunities. So that was the first question. The second question, was there particular things about the way she organized it that is setting a model that other, other organizations in Nepal are following or other organizations around the world or did she look to some model somewhere else that she implemented? Do you know those questions, those answers? So thank you for the question, Professor. Basically, uh, taking three pa uh, papers as a literature review, we're uh, putting in order as an examples how Know, little sister fund as an organization is you know controlling i mean like supporting women for example so the first paper was about the poverty reductions uh, paper which talks about the real women issues in the rural area of nepal so taking this as an uh, first paper for the literature review was uh, you know like 
showing how you know women are dominated in the society second paper is about the role of ngos in improving uh, this kind of you know poverty dance or like you know actually uh, lsf is such an organization where for example i'm also an alumni student of lsf so basically when i was not able to uh, you know uh, paying the fees to the college uh, they supported me i mean it's it's not about you know actually poverty or something like that but the students who want to actually study or get who is actually want to you know get education and not able to do that because of their you know financial conditions lsf supports there so another question was uh, about you know uh, you know following the order so i think you know i i just took an examples of lsf it, it uh, might not be in that same way but you know i believe ngos in nepal at the current stages are doing very good you know uh, to improve the education status of female in nepal and um, also there are a lot of organizations who are working for women's rights at this stage so the first paper when i was discussing about the uh, you know the poverty reduction one in the rural area so at that uh, paper i found that even you know like male females are not you know aware about their rights you know that was the reasons why i kept that paper in the this day they were not even aware, aware about their rights and they were only aware that you know you need parental property and you have that right even they were not even aware about their reproductive rights that they should so which is why they have so many problems of reproduction uh, reproductive problems so this is why i guess uh, i included that paper in that in my paper uh, i hope i clarified if not if i can we can go on discussion Thank you. That's, that's fine, Pooja. It's um, a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is the reason that you chose this organization to your like research paper? What are the main reasons? So first, uh, I I mentioned earlier that I'm also a humanist student of uh, LSF. I mean this organization. I got. uh you know supported in one of one of the year uh, when i was not able to uh, pay my fee one is that reason i have enough you know knowledge or like you know formations about uh, this organization because i have been a part of that so and also this organization is some something that is always in my heart and i'm always proud to call and on my sister of lsf that's all reasons is that i want to brought up in this class and explain about this as an example thank you oh, okay thank you okay who wants to present next ma'am i can go okay go ahead nora <laughs> but i can't i don't know how would i can share my screen i will just say that's great let's just follow the argument which is i like following arguments i like powerpoints but this is great so okay guys concentrate go ahead uh, hello everyone uh, today my topic uh, is women's right in education in my background i talk about why uh, this burning argument discrimination of women in education and preferential treatment for men uh, you see education and economy is interconnected so if uh, if the women are not given chance they, it's unfair for the 50% of the population and as well as the economic stability of a country as a whole my thesis of the paper is to focus on education development of women and i talk about begum rokia which is a prominent figure in bangladesh uh, and the factors why women are getting discriminated uh, for in their education and authority should should support uh, and give equal attention to women in uh, our rural and urban areas uh, now i will talk about the in regarding women's education i need to talk about the rural and urban aspect and thinking of the people that education for women is a waste of money a survey was conducted based on bbs on the country of 2000 to 2010 on targeting the nep national education policy where it is seen that in rural areas in the primary level of education is 
um, more, more or less more, uh, but in university level or in secondary level, they don't get education. Uh, uh, I disagree with the viewpoint that uh, women don't need equal education. Women are equally capable if they are get a, getting the chance of educated because in Bangladesh, there is very low access in, uh, less access in education in the rural areas. From Fred Doshi 2019, I have also quoted that uh, a declaration in 1990 was given to focus on female education. Now I'll talk about Begum Nokia Shakao Hussain, who was born in 1880 in Pairabandhu Ran Rangpur district. Uh, she was the first Bengal Muslim feminist writer, educationist, activist, uh, who is known for her heroic attempt for women's and girls' education and independence. She herself came from an Orthodox family where she they had to do cover for the, and uh, educating women was a dream. Uh, by seeing her dedication from her childhood with the help of her elder brother and her support of her husband, Shakao Hussain, she pursued her higher education in, uh, in English and Bangla. And then she, after his, uh, her husband's death, uh, she realized that women are getting a lot of hardship and uh, they need education to get away from this. Uh, she, so she started different movements by writing various essay articles uh, and going to home to home of various uh, of the girls uh, girls' houses to convince their parents to send them to education. Uh, Begum Rokia, in her later life, she founded a school, Shakwa Memorials Girls School, in the name of her husband, and a ladies' association, Anjume Khatune Islam, to translate her feminist ideas into reality, which is now run by the state government of West Bengal. Very good. Um, and then as a writer, she depicted women's education and raised voice in different meetings. Uh, she used to go to many educational conferences. Uh, in, uh, uh, now I will give us, I will summarize a speech of her in which she says that women are treated as the lowest of the commodities in uh, India. Uh, uh, in, um, so uh, in here, the animals are valued, animals' life is valued, but the women's life is not valued in this continent. I agree uh, with the statement of Begum Rokia that women uh, at the time and now are treated as the lowest of the communities and treated as burden. Uh, she realized that education is the only key uh, through which the, they can get away of, from their hardship. It's important that women raise their ability to perform logical rationalization by education so the country itself can be developed. And then I briefly discuss. Sorry, man. I briefly discuss about some reasons why education women are getting deprived or getting drop out from educational institution. That is one traditional thinking that women uh, that men will give the family's financial condition, and we should save money for the woman's dowry, and it's a waste of money. And uh, then second is uneducated parents and guardians. They don't really are aware of that rising concern that women education is important. Then financial crisis of family, uh, they don't get to meet their family daily needs. How can they do? Uh, how can they and, uh, spend money for the education of girls? And criminal and sexual violence in educational institution uh, done by uh, mostly teachers and staff and girls drop out from college uh, school colleges and then child marriage uh, are done in Bangladesh, especially as there is a lack of reproductive health and they get pregnant uh, in a small age. And uh, uh, but, but Bangladesh government has made a law for the perfect age for marriage for girls and boys, that is 18 and 21. To conclude my paper, I will say that education is the most important weapon uh, for girls education and according to Wilson Craft also education gives a woman reasoning power to which they can differentiate between situation and they can uh, get a whole of rising concerns of reproductive health issues and many, and so that mortality rate of Bangladesh will get um, reduced. The government is arranging many scholarship programs by spe especially for rural area girls working with different NGOs such as BRAC uh, has ensured their active participation in the institution. Thank you so much, that's it. Okay, question. Is that a clap, Marzia, or a hand raise? That's a clap. Uh, that's a clap, Mom. Uh, I do not have any question, but I have a comment. Okay. May I? Okay. 
what was what was really uh, inspiring for me is that she herself uh, didn't have a very powerful background but she tried as a woman she tried to support other women and also that the most uh, inspiring thing was that she went home to home to uh, give awareness about the importance of education uh, for me uh, it is really uh, appreciating that a woman supports women and a woman find the values of education so thank you mahira for giving this amazing information all right, Mahira, what I was thinking, right, with that door-to-door -door thing, I was thinking, okay, you guys, we got to figure out which goddesses are possessing her, right? So education, and she's a writer, that's Apollo. And then there's door knocking, that's Artemis. Like she gets out there, right, and just pushes herself and pushes herself. So, <laughs> so you can think of that um, with... Um, the first presentation, I think that woman was particularly sort of Athena, worried about rights, right? Women getting their rights. Um, so, um, so we can think about things like that too. That And once women get determined, then they have to call up the powers of a lot of these different goddesses, even if it's not natural for them, right? Uh, who else has a question or a comment? Okay, so we'll go, to, who else, who's next? Who wants to go, give it a shot. We have to do a lot more of them. We've only got four of them done so far. Unless you wanna be here all night next time <laughs> for the next class. Hello, ma'am. Toma, go ahead. Ma'am, I didn't hand it in because I need to do some revise after class, then I will submit. So can I uh, do like Mahira? Can I do it yes, by word? Definitely. You don't have to have submitted it, just present it. That's what I would like you to do. So go Toma. Okay, ma'am. What do you, go ahead. So. Hello everyone. Hello ma'am. Um, my name is Toma Borma and today I'm going to uh, discuss about my research paper. My research topic is gender inequality in education in Bangladesh. And um, the background of study, uh, we know education is just a thing where only a single gender gets the poverty. It's everyone's basic rights to acquire education, we know. Then uh, gender inequality is a concept that is primarily based on a uh, characteristic of gender, and it is one of the great problematic um, practice in all over Bangladesh. So my main claim is there are many factors that contribute to um, gender discrimination in education um, based off uh, different perspective in Bangladesh. But I found some reliable factors that mainly exist gender fairness in learning. Those are the part producing gender diversity in education, like child marriage and profession referring to parents. Then the elements determine learning skill, uh, like the traditional perspective according to education. And um, I also going to discuss about the initiative, those are contributing female learning. So my significance of the study is to uh, get some knowledge about the systemity that led to make the discrimination between gender in Bangladesh. Um, and uh, my, the research methodology is, uh, um, the, my research is based on uh, the inferior investigation and uh, it's a theoretically inquiry and also covers fractional information regarding uh, this topic. Then, um, I found the data from uh, Google Scholar, the journal research gate and the gesture uh, to, uh, to prove my claim uh, positive. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, there are lots of uh, uh, fields to uh, found the research broadly, but I choose the main factors that may mainly contribute. So in literature review, my first claim is um, 
uh, first claim of the research is the component that producing the gender inequality in education in Bangladesh, the child marriage and profession referring to parents. So uh, child marriage is one of the great practice in uh, Bangladesh, which mainly produce gender inequality between um, different genders. Um, so it uh, um, in mo it mostly happen in the rural areas, uh, uh, not much in urban areas. And um, there one author is talking about that, uh, like Kabir Ghosh and Sauli, uh, who is talking about the child marriage is girls to become mother in their early ages and that responsibility of children bound them to refuse uh, taking education. And also uh, the child marriage is, uh, um, lead her amount of material needs and uh, um, some diplomatic situation that uh, that harm the economical growth. And there I found uh, one, one woman uh, who was uh, in my community, um, who was uh, get uh, early marriage um, in her early ages. Um, uh, her name is Shilpi. Um, it's just my own example. Uh, and so, um, she had two babies and uh, then at the, the perspective is mostly so the girls um, this practice because the people who are living in the erotic area they just think girls uh, as a product and they do whatever they want uh, with them and they get the powers to male to take the decision of individuals um, and the some perspective about women like the girls are going to complete their full education, then they become old and no one will marry with her. Uh, and that's why they prefer to girls to get married in their child ages. Then uh, the second part of the claim is the element. Uh, no, and the, there are some research found that um, the profession mostly referring uh, to uh, get education and uh, in Bangladesh is not uh, Bangladesh is a developing country so there is a, the unemployment is a, a, one of the great problem in Bangladesh and uh, uh, because of those things uh, the parents are not uh, that much uh, relate to give education uh, to her old uh, children so that's why they just choose their boys uh, to get education um, but uh, they do not choose their girls to get education. Uh, they think that the girl, one day the girls will get married and uh, so that's why she don't need to get education. That's why they just uh, give right to their boys to get education for support their uh, families. Um, and it mostly lead because of uh, the um, higher class families because they can easily handle their uh, children um, education, but uh, it mostly happen uh, the uh, rural uh, rural areas people um, because they are financially weaker and uh, they are not capable to um, give rights, uh, all the opportunities to their children in their low salaries. Uh, so I think that's why uh, the gender discrimination is happening um, because of the low salaries of parents. And um, the second part of the claim is to, to the element that determines learning skill, the traditional perspective according to, to the learning of girls. So uh, I found there are some research that examined that um, uh, according to the learning, the women mostly performed by using some re religious views, uh, which mainly uh, produced gender inequality uh, between um, genders. And uh, according to the, uh, I found um, researchers uh, like Fateh and Camelia, uh, who talk about the traditional perspective of education of girls is always shows in the girls who are belonging in Muslim families. And there are some religious beliefs on education, which is them to don't get education. So it just not mostly practice in um, and Muslim families, it's also um, practice in uh, all the uh, all another religions. So because of this perspective, like uh, um, if they uh, give the girls, uh, if they like invest those money to girls education in their early ages, so they cannot be able to give them married and they don't, uh, they do not able to get invest again for their marriage. That's why they just uh, think girls to um, 
practice house work so that the girls can um, if the girls um, get uh, great in their household items then she can make a great repu reputation for their families in their husband's house and also um, the dowry system is mostly uh, harm the girls uh, mostly discriminate girls uh, um, because um, um, then finally uh, uh, there is a lots of research that founded the organization which is mostly um, working to reduce the gender diversity in education in bangladesh so if we um, so i found two most ref uh, um, reflective organization that mostly work uh, to reduce gender inequality uh, in Bangladesh, like the BRAC, uh, BRAC organization um, that works by creating branches in all over Bangladesh. And uh, like uh, there are 97,742 uh, members which working to reduce gender inequality, um, reduce gender inequality, and they are uh, uh, main motto is to um, be, uh, make the equal rights between genders, uh, and it mostly work for the women to living slum areas. And also the Bangladesh Women Foundation, which is the another organization which uh, mostly uh, working to reduce poverty and gender discrimination. And uh, they also uh, uh, working uh, to decrease the gender gender equal uh, gender inequality in all over bangladesh uh, so after um, looking my claims i just uh, um, come up with a solution that is the gender diversity in education uh, though it's a biggest issue in bangladesh but it can be um, uh, covered with uh, uh, the public awareness uh, because if uh, every single one individual know about the powers of every single gender so um, the uh, gender so they can um, do not define girls as a product so uh, so the uh, there's part just work just a couple of minutes just a minute go ahead wrap it up yes ma'am so and um, so we we need to um uh, the uh, the organization mostly working uh, for uh, uh, reducing this problem by going uh, their places and finding the problems which led to gender discrimination uh, between um, girls uh, so that uh, um, this concern can be reduced um, go go up far from uh, in bangladesh okay good that's it Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Sure. Couple questions. Anybody have questions? I have a comment, uh, like a question. Like, uh, thank you, uh, Toma, for giving uh, like uh, these types of uh, like <clears throat> presentation. Uh, I I was really like uh, it was really inspiring. <laughs> Uh, like uh, for all of us in Bangladesh, especially in Bangladeshi people, like, thank you. Thank you so much. Marcia, go ahead. You're welcome. Uh, professor, there are a couple of questions in my mind by giving this uh, presentation. First, I want to know that is child uh, marriage because of education, I mean, because of lack of education, poverty, or uh, this is a belief uh, and tradition and a tradition in Bangladesh. And the other thing is that uh, I want to know that is child marriage happening uh, only in poor families and rural areas or no, in rich family also girls get uh, early marriage uh, and also in the cities, does it happen or not? And uh, also, uh, I want to know that what is uh, what is girls' belief and perspective regarding early marriage? Uh, and what is uh, the Bangladesh society's point of view about it? Because uh, for me, it's so uh, it's so uh, amazing, not amazing, it's, uh, it's a question that when we say early marriage, only girls get early marriage or not, the boys are also uh, in an early marriage. Uh, because if we only say that early marriage is for women, so are they marrying with older than them or no? Someone in their age. It's uh, 
it's really uh, like uh, for me it's really interesting that why this is happening and it, or uh, is it because of like the lack of education or no this is a tradition in bangladesh that girls should uh, get early marriage because tuma you have mentioned that um, uh, there is a perspective that says if the girls do not marry early they will stay at home and no one will marry them so it 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 somehow shows that this is a tradition even uh, maybe for a rich family also it happens so can you uh, kindly clarify it that what is the really exact reason behind it so uh, i think uh, it um, most of the time it mostly happen in uh, uh, poor families uh, uh, but in some cases it just uh, go like the bigger fam like healthy families but in most of the case it happened in poor families because uh, um, because of some traditional uh, views like uh, the older generation like the grandfather or grandmother who make the rules that uh, uh, like i heard from my community that um, if uh, the woman can study uh, like uh, complete her full education so uh, they can just um, uh, uh, get uh, older uh, old in their uh, ages um, after complete their uh, study so no one come out to get her married so that's why they just think that uh, like uh, when the um, girls are study uh, completing her uh, secondary education or primary education so she just need to get married uh, so that uh, um, she can uh, um, contribute a good uh, uh, works uh, for uh, her husband house or um, and make a great reputation for her families and also in, in some cases uh, the uh, poor families who have financially not so stable so um, in their families, uh, it may mostly practice because uh, the families who are not financially uh, strong, um, they just give priority to their uh, boys because they uh, they do not capable to um, give all the priority to their old children. So that's why they just force their uh, girls to get married and, and they just uh, um, forcing them emotionally to get married. Um, Okay, and, uh, so, off here. we have 20 you. students in the class. We've done five so far. So we really need to do a couple more. Um, and anybody who wants to get a little bit more time has to go now because to, next time it's gonna be, you're gonna have to really condense it and really focus it. And I'm gonna have to cut you off a lot next time. So who would like to go to, uh, today? Professor me, Jacinta. Ma'am, I want to give a, a brief summary of my paper. Okay, just a sec. So, I mainly wrote on the economic environment. Of wait, Rahima, wait a sec. Can I, ma'am? Wait, Jacinta said, okay, so yes, it's Jacinta first and then Rahima. Okay, is that okay? And then that'll be it for okay, today. Okay, Professor. Uh, okay, ma'am. I... I uh, I have to change some uh, of my um, back, uh, some of uh, something I might uh, backwards. So uh, I want to uh, uh, summarize uh, um, if uh, in short way uh, to present uh, in front of uh, you. So my topic is about. Um, uh, um, uh, the challenge and expectation to enrich women uh, entrepreneurship in Bangladesh. Okay. So, uh, uh, um, my uh, study focus, my research focus is um, uh, is to identify the barriers and challenges of women entrepreneurship in Bangladesh, and uh, to provide a business profile uh, to the women entrepreneurs and some recommendation to overcome uh, these problems. Um, so the whole summary uh, 
uh, summary is about my uh, Marissa's paper is uh, women and uh, entrepreneurship in Bangladesh is uh, growing uh, re, uh, um, uh, is growing day by day. Uh, more women entrepreneurs are getting involved uh, in economic ac uh, activities of the country, uh, especially in the small scale of business uh, and show more or less. Yes, uh, they are playing a significant uh, role uh, uh, in our so, uh, economy uh, because uh, we know uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, is a uh, half of population are women. So uh, the uh, number of women uh, as uh, working uh, uh, in a uh, business, uh, uh, but they have many uh, restrictions and many uh, problems, uh, 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 such as um, uh, it, uh, uh, because of uh, in, uh, economic, social, uh, social, and political. So, uh, women are uh, uh, and uh, involved in many uh, various enterprise uh, enterprise. Uh, though they have challenges, they overcome their uh, uh, their uh, uh, their uh, their mindset. And uh, uh, though it's a male-dominated society uh, and uh, very complex uh, society, um, but uh, they are working uh, for their families uh, to uh, a better life, uh, to uh, lead a better life, and uh, to uh, support their families. Uh, so, but uh, um, another is uh, the uh, uh, challenges that uh, uh, women in Bangladesh are facing uh, uh, in this uh, 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 entrepreneurship. Uh, the most major problem is uh, 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 women entrepreneurs, and uh, they have uh, enough. Uh, they don't have enough idea. Um, uh, uh, and uh, la uh, lacking of sufficient information about uh, their uh, their problems, um, and uh, government has uh, lacking uh, to provide uh, service uh, to women, and uh, many of uh, development banks has no that much. Uh, um, uh, Hello. Uh, yes, uh, they don't have uh, they don't have much uh, uh, in uh, contribution for women uh, facilities uh, you know, in their particular uh, uh, banks. So, um, I think uh, uh, the uh, problems uh, um, uh, women in Bangladesh uh, are we are facing. But if we uh, government ha will come uh, forward. Uh, uh, the uh, country will improve more because half of the women uh, women and, and a number of women and and a, uh, are women so um, uh, if they contribute uh, their their business uh, uh, by entrepreneurship uh, our uh, country will improve uh, uh, their society and uh, the economic also Okay. Uh, so that's all. Thank you. Okay. 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 Two questions and then we'll do Rahima. Okay. Any questions? Um, all right. Well, let's see. Um, Jacinta, you could have been a little bit more specific about the obstacles, right? You could have just listed them. One is they don't get enough money from banks. Second of all, that's why government should come in. Third of all, people don't, uh, it's harder for them to sell their products. They don't get as much respect. Or uh, fourth, they, they don't have childcare. And so they have to, you know, setting up your business takes so many hours and they don't have childcare. Fifth, they have, they get criticism from the culture, you know, just something like that. So I, <coughs> um, anyway, that, that's, does that make sense? I mean, I don't know if you'd find research like that, but that would be, I think you, 
kept saying it in a more generic way, right? It's growing at small scale, but you know, just be specific, like what kind of products, which parts of Bangladesh, um, and then all the obstacles, and if there's any cultural support for them, do they often have to go to their parents to babysit for their kids or anything? I'm again, I'm not sure the research would, um, you know, how much there is. But anyway, does that make sense, Jacinta? To get it a little more. Yes, ma'am. I include uh, uh, in uh, literature review. I include the challenges uh, by points uh, like financial problems, lack of knowledge, lack of training and, and entrepreneurial uh, training. Then uh, um, family responsibilities, uh, government taxing policy and infrastructure. Okay. Uh, access to, uh, yes, I. Uh, um, you should have. Uh, you just should have. I explained these points, uh, but uh, this is. Uh, I uh, uh, shortly summarize uh, everything. Okay, actually, actually. I say that that would have been the start, right? That's all you've you've done it. I think maybe that would have been the the main thing you say because that's the thing that no other people don't know probably, right? Anyway, it sounds good. Um, Rahima. Yeah, that sounds good, Jessica. It sounds like it'll be fine when I read it. Go ahead, Rahima. Hello, everyone. My research paper is on economic empowerment of women. Uh, here, my main claim is that uh, that economic empowerment, uh, like uh, economic empowerment of women, can bring equality to herself, sustainable development in the society, and freedom and respect uh, herself in the society. Uh, here, I uh, started my writing with uh, like quote from a newspaper. Uh, a, a quote means a title of a newspaper was published in 2016, which was like economic independence is the key to women's empowerment. And uh, then I uh, talked a little bit about uh, this quote where uh, a district. Uh, a department head of a district was uh, said that quote, and uh, then I talk about the equality struggle of women of uh, all of. I, I didn't mention about a particular state or con, uh, country. I talk about genuinely for all of the women how women are uh, facing inequality in the society, and then uh, and then that's why I give a suggestion. That suggestion means it's my opinion, but didn't I directly say that it's my opinion that uh, only economic empowerment can bring women this equality. And then I took one quote from a, a belated poet of Bengali poet, Kajan Israel Islam. He said that whatever great creation in this world is everlasting good, half of it's done by man and half of it's by an woman. So it's the, this quote really proves that how women uh, uh, are important. They are, uh, they are uh, how to say, their efforts are important. And then I talked about like the, in the following that uh, uh, freedom of women, like they uh, uh, they don't have the like they don't all, always get the uh, freedom how to choose their career or even how to choose their outfit wear. That is how. And then also I talked about uh, about uh, that uh, economic empowerment is also a basic right of everyone. Like uh, is especially for women actually. It's always seen that men always get uh, men have to do a work, have to do some work, but uh, women are not getting this opportunity that they have to uh, do a work. They mainly depend on the family, uh, whether it's their father or it's their husband. But uh, I think it's the like it's basic right for herself to income for herself to bear the cost of herself and actually this is all i have written i didn't prepare anything formally so i can't say briefly anything uh, like uh, in broad anything and then i have taken five uh, sources which are like from obviously internet uh, because i didn't get any chance to research by myself and uh, these are, are proving my claims whatever i have said that's all ma'am okay all right. Um, so, what what are your sources? Is it the United Nations, or is it, you know, if it's not a yes, ma'am. I have taken information from UN Women and also a research uh, from uh, newspapers, and also like other uh, research papers uh, from Google Scholar. 
Okay, were the scholars, where were the scholars from? Uh, I, what do you mean by well, from? Are the American scholars, are they European or are they South Asian? If they are international, I, I, I don't actually research about the particular uh, writer. Well, scholar. I, I took this from Google Scholar. Yeah, okay. Usually in the, you know, when you have an article, they have the name of the person and they have the university they're associated with, right? That's kind of what legitimizes the, that's all. I wasn't asking any kind of spooky question or anything. Um, I was just, I'm wondering, you know, who does international research, right? And um, do they do it out of particular universities? And I mean, just questions like that, but that's okay if you can't, if it's not at the top of your mind. Um, anybody else uh, have questions? What, one thing I'll say, well, let me say a couple things and then I do want everyone to be able to get their questions asked. But um, so I think your goal um, should be that you literally in your paper, your thesis will literally create knowledge that hasn't been there before, right? So um, for example, with uh, child marriage, right? Uh, it's a problem in a lot of research. Is there anything that somebody is doing, some organization, and they have a particular methodology they figured out, right, Brock, maybe? Somebody has figured out some techniques, some methods uh, that would actually work to uh, motivate people not to marry their daughters off, right, for example. Um, or with, um, so the first one about the Yemeni woman, I mean, I think that, that that's, carving out new knowledge is because uh, Yemen has, doesn't have a whole lot, although probably have a lot more than I'm aware of. Um, and then um, the more that you can, I mean, it's nice to see how when someone said the cause of child marriage, she had, you know, all these causes were interconnected, right? So it's, it's poverty, it's, the expense of education, and yet she's not going to make money like the son will. Um, the other, but I mean, what I was thinking was that someday parents, if you can convince them that actually, if you educate your daughter and if you get sick, right? If somebody in the family gets sick, the dad, she could actually get a job, right? And provide for you. So if they can be convinced that overall, you know, preparing for your future and having economic security in your whole lifetime, right? Even after your daughter's maybe gone and got married, if there was some expectation that if I educate you and I can't provide for myself, you know, you'll give back later on, or I'm just totally speculating, but I just think things are going to change. And so there must be some organizations kind of trying to explore ways to get people to think about this differently or to get educated women to provide for their fed. There's enough stories going around where it paid off to educate your daughter. Um, let's see. Um, uh, any other questions or comments that the rest of you have? Um, and then we could also go ahead. Somebody? No, miss, no, no question regarding uh, presentation. Okay. But um, I, I was making sure that uh, those who we did our presentations today, we will submit in two days, right? Yeah. And then I can, you know, I can start getting them ready. Um, let's see. The, uh, okay, so the other 
the other thing is just to start building on getting a sense that, you know, relieving poverty, educating business, um, giving back to educate, uh, all these things sort of work together. And then also um, you could, if you're specifically working in your country, is, the, is your government, you know, like one of the students said, the government needs to participate with the banks, right? With funding, are they participating? Is this a, is this a serious problem in the country? Um, or is it just that uh, the government's starting to, but it's just a matter of degree or is there, right? Is this a real obstacle? Has it not been done before? I don't know, again, you can't research everything, but just to give you a sense that you're on the cutting edge of something. So there's lots and lots of questions. And all of you are at that point where um, your, you know, your job, your place is to try and combine what's known and anticipate things. Cause literally you're gonna be part of something new for the most part, right? And so if you can anticipate, or if you can do research, women are right in the middle of doing this and they're totally engaged. And so, so younger women come and they've done a little, they've done some uh, data analysis, right? They've researched a number of women who are doing research and they've come to this mega data sort of conclusion. And then they can offer a paper that would, uh, that would provide uh, advice, right? Moving forward, what to be careful about, what mistakes to avoid, what has seemed to work, come up with some new ideas. So, I mean, it's exciting. It's, and I just want you to all feel like you're, you're really a part of something. Um, and you've got 60 years, just keep that in mind, right? You, you've got a lot of time. And I'm just sort of trying to give you so not just the incentive, but like the mental questions to ask and then the tools, research tools. And it's not just me, of course, all of your classes do that. But, you know, it's fun for me to be part of that process also. So, okay, it's 1040. Um, next time, if somebody wants to have a PowerPoint, um, just you have to know that it's gonna have to be a lot shorter we're not going to be able to sort of, you know, engage in this nice conversation. Um, no, Asada, you don't have to submit your paper today. So the people who are presented two days from now, the people who present two days from now, two days from now, from then. All right, that's good. Professor, yeah. I have a question. Like, uh, who, like, who, the people who are like who are presented the, uh, today, do we need to submit our paper today or like can no, we submit no. like- uh... Two days from now, two days from now, right? You can revise them and then 24 hours. Oh, from, right? Before, like before fifth, like- uh, Before the next the... class, before the next class, right? Two days, you get- Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So good luck. And I'm excited. And I, you know, I, I want to be part of the process if I can help you. Uh, I don't want to intimidate you, but I don't want to be too much of a softy. So, <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah, professor. Hi, Bruce. In the next, in the next class, I will go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just wanted to present today. But... Okay. All right, you'll have to remind me, Breezy. Um, okay, Professor. Okay, bye-bye. See you soon, guys. Bye, Professor. Have a nice day. Bye, Professor.